In this video, we're going to talk about Hylion, trading under the ticker symbol HYLN. Hylion is a startup company operating in the electric vehicle sector founded by Thomas Healy in Cedar Park, Texas. It specializes in the electrification of long-haul trucks, and what separates the company from other EV startups is that other than the fully electric vehicles that it is developing, Hylion is also proposing to install an add-on to the existing fleet of trucking companies so that they can use alternative energy resources other than the combustion engine. Hylion has been one of the more popular EV companies back in 2020 and attracted a lot of retail traders to buy the company's shares. So far, Hylion has been able to stay away from the negative news that some companies fell into, and as a result, the reputation of the company remained mostly intact independently of what the company's stock price is trading at. The trading volume of Hylion has recently been 907,000 shares, compared to an average of 2.6 million shares. Over the previous 52 week, its price has been fluctuating between $5.57 and $22.25. The market cap of Hylion is currently at $1 billion, Compared to an enterprise value of $1 billion, the difference between the market cap and the enterprise value is the premium or discount financial market is willing to allocate to the company based on its current fundamentals, leverage, and asset composition. Some of the examples of impact by leverage is if the company has a lot of debt, then the market may feel uncertain about the company's capacity to pay back its interest and principles, which in turn, may negatively impact its profitability and solvency. Another key element to understand is the asset composition of many of those companies, and it is especially true for growth-type companies. For them, one of the most significant assets they own is called goodwill. Goodwill is an expectation of the market that a company is able to generate more profit or to have more growth than other companies, especially because they may have good management more popular online following, or stronger brand recognition. In other words, it's not a tangible assets they can use, but it's often the reason why companies are perceived to be trading at a discount, because the market cap may be lower than the enterprise value, which includes the assets that are tangible and intangible. In comparison to its historical price fluctuations, the stock is 6.37% higher than the one-month low, same for the 3-month low and the 52-week low. In terms of its options market, which often gives a hint on the market sentiment on where the stock price is likely going to head toward, the implied volatility is 85%, compared to a historical volatility of 63%. The put-call volume ratio is currently at 61, or 0 0.61, which is quite high compared to many other stocks that we've looked so far. The most recent volume of options traded has been 811 contracts within a day compared to the 30-day average of 2,700 contracts. In terms of the open interest, the most recent volume of open interest has been 49,000 contracts compared to the 30-day average of 76,000 contracts. Regarding the shareholder structure, institutional shareholders hold 25.7% of all outstanding shares. The biggest shareholders include Vanguard, BlackRock, and iShares. The relevance of the shareholder structure is important to determine if you should be holding the stock long term or view it as a short term volatility play. If the stock is mainly held by retail traders, then it may be a sign that stock lacks the depth to justify long term holdings from shareholders. Of course, there are exceptions from what I said above, but usually the consensus is that there should be at least 25-30% to 30 of institutional participation for the stock to be perceived as a sound investment and not just a short-term trade. Let's also look at the short interest present in the stock, which is the amount of positions that aim to profit if the share price falls lower. Sometimes, if there are significant short interest in the total volume, it could be a sign that there is an organized shorting operation going on. For Hylion, the current short interest is 18.6% of the total float and 54.4% of the dark pool transactions. Now, let's take a look at the indicators. 
Financial indicators give us a suggestion of what the price movements are showing, and they can be used as one of the elements to determine what should be our overall approach. The oscillators are showing one sell, nine neutrals, and one buy. Overall, the oscillators suggest an overall neutral tendency. The movement averages of the past price actions have 13 sell, one neutral, and one buy. The overall tendency from the perspective of moving averages is strong sell. Moving averages can be used to determine whether the stock is overbought or oversold compared to its previous price fluctuations, which aim to be used to see if your trade is sufficiently well-timed. It doesn't mean, however, that you should rely on moving average or oscillators alone to determine if you should be buying or selling the shares. Regarding the pivot points, which are support levels and resistance, sprinkled in the price trends, the support levels are $3.70, $5.97, and $6.09. For the resistance levels, they are $6.67, $7.45 and $8.70. From both a corporate and equity perspective, I believe that Hylion is a company that benefited from both its innovative approach to help trucks saving its fuel cost, as well as developing its full electric vehicle solutions for the long distance haulers. From a corporate and equity perspective, I believe that Hylion is a company that benefited both from its innovative approach to health trucks to save its fuel costs and developing a full electric vehicles for the long distance haulers. It also benefited from the online following that its narrative and stock introduction timing have generated back in 2020. It was a period of time when a lot of the capital was spooked out by their traditional positions due to the heavy losses incurred in March 2020 and as a result, they were looking for a place to park their money into without worrying about huge losses. EV sector was the place a lot of this capital went into. At the end of the day, support and demand have determined the plan, but there is also another reason, and that is the power of pure narrative. In the investor's mind, at least for the investors in those circumstances, there is not necessarily the need for fundamental results, at least not yet, which are delivery numbers, numbers of models, or timetable of rolling out new products, as long as the narrative is compelling. This was enough back then because everyone was comfortable with the idea that there will be more or at least enough capital flowing in this sector to justify the valuations and stock price without worrying about the liquidity. Of course, Hylion is also interesting for investors because it was aiming another niche compared to Tesla and decided to invest in trucks. Its product back then was an add-on to help trucks to start using fuel cell energy instead of using their combustion engines. On paper, this has definitely attracted a lot of investors because, indeed, in theory, this would attract a lot of trucking companies to at least test this engine out in the case it can provide savings on one of the industry's largest expenses. With that being said, the reality is somewhat different because the stock is definitely having a very hard period of time right now with its stock price on the decline for a fairly long time at this point. There are a few reasons to explain this phenomenon and I'll try to make it simple. There is a shift of interest from market participants. If the name of the game back in 2020 was SPAC, and EV companies, in 2021 and beyond, there are more choices for capital to be placed in. From time to time, different industries or individual companies may attract a massive amount of money in it for various reasons, such as short squeeze or the illusion of it. The expansion of crypto lending, recovery or perceived opportunity in the traditional lines of business, or simply the pursuit of stability by putting money in fixed income instruments are all possible reasons to explain why there are less people putting their money in Hylion or EV sector at large. The global supply chain issues are also slowing down the operations of the company, which has already caused some delay in product deliveries. With all those factors in mind, I would suggest to keep an eye on Hylion, even if sometimes it's simply to look at how low the stock has fallen 
Despite the lackluster stock price, the company still presents some interesting aspects that may attract investors' demand in the years to come. Nevertheless, I think that it's a stock for those who are more on the risk-tolerant side and who are willing to put their capital at risk and who know how to remain disciplined by controlling their exposures. My recommendation is to keep a maximum exposure between 0.5 to 1% of your capital in Hylion and to start buying when there are more support that become available. Right now, the support line has been tested a couple of times over the past few weeks, but we still have to see more confirmations ahead to commit more capital. The profit targets are a bit far from where we are right now, but I would say that overall, we should start considering realizing any potential profits 12 to 18 months from now. Your investment should also take into consideration the market conditions and the surrounding sentiment to determine what kind of asset should be picked, for how much and for how long. First of all, the financial market doesn't reflect the real economy. If the stock market is doing great, it doesn't necessarily mean that companies are hiring people, that salaries and living standards are rising. Sometimes it's the exact opposite that happens. Because the stock market is a pool of money where things come in and come out, going to different sectors to be placed. The capital may be used to be invested in a company to improve its efficiency and productivity, but it can also be used to buy up shares and assets in order to make a profit. This phenomenon is called financialization, and it means that the more money has been used for non-productive purposes like merger and acquisitions, fees to financial sectors, buying back equity, and so on, the less there is for the real economy. Another way to put it is that ever since 2008, the Dow Jones has increased significantly. But people don't necessarily see this growth in tangible ways. This is why we got to be careful with the assumptions that rising stock price means better outlook for the company. Sometimes it doesn't mean anything other than the fact that the asset is getting more expensive to be bought and that their yields is going down as a result. Additionally, some new phenomenons are now palpable, such as the creation of new bubbles, the participation and influence of retail traders in specific situations, and the anticipation of a massive recession or at least pullback. Bubbles have always been created on and off over the past few centuries, but nowadays, it's quite interesting to see the speed at which an organic bubble can be created back in 2020. Because almost immediately after the major collapse of the financial market back in early 2020, the market decided to pour a massive amount of capital in the EV sector and anything that's related to it. Stock prices went up the sky and for a moment, it really felt like any EV stock can be a golden goose. Another way to say this is that any SPAC with an EV company in it will become the next Tesla, right? Even if it didn't last that long, this episode definitely allowed the market participants to park a lot of their money in a sector, leaving it with either a lot of profits or at least avoiding incurring large losses because they left their money in the blue chips or the sectors heavily affected. The involvement of retail traders in companies has also been much more pronounced in recent months, especially in the scenarios of a short squeeze. Companies may have short sellers who believe that the stock will decrease in value. The short squeeze consists of buying the stock price up to force the short sellers to recover their positions, which will then also trigger an even bigger increase of stock price as a result. Of course, I'm not saying that this is always rational. I'm not even saying that those companies always have a convincing narrative. So, for example, if you play video games, ask yourself if you personally bought all your games at GameStop, knowing that you can buy the same games just online in the comfort of your home. But nevertheless, retail traders do have a much more significant influence in the stock price nowadays, for the better or worse. Personally, I think that as long as the volatility is high or gets higher, it'll create more opportunities. The final phenomenon is the anticipation of a recession. Many people have been expecting something of that sort to happen ever since 2008. 
there were quite a few companies that were supposed to go bankrupt because their debt structure is no longer sustainable or that their business model is bad. But overall, the system was able to hold its ground, especially in the North American market. This is partially because capital around the world often choose to come to the American capital market when things get heated back home. This is especially the case when geopolitical tensions increase around the world. In order to make sure that capital can provide a steady return without being affected too much by the central bank policies and inflations, I think that this phenomenon will increase its pace as time passes by, at least for the next couple of years. This is why we will likely see the blue chips continuing their ascension, even if the growth stocks, even if for the growth stocks, things may be a lot more nuanced. The bottom line in all this is that the environment is getting more uncertain and volatile in a context where asset yields will probably remain quite low because the real economy cannot be improved with just money. As far as we're concerned, this means that the patience would be a great virtue for all of us and that there will be plenty of opportunities to eye for better prices. With that being said, always make sure to keep your positions diversified and keep the risk level under check. Speculative positions should play a small part in your overall portfolio. I would say it's better to keep them below 10 to 20% of your total holdings. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel.